All right, we're watching Gimme the Fires. We're playing Anna on Midtown. This is Gold 4 on console. Help me improve so I stop getting roasted in chat. I know that everyone always says that you shouldn't listen to other Metal Rank players in your game because they don't know what they're talking about. I really want to get better and shut all the haters up, especially when I can see them make horrible mistakes, and yet they still blame me for losing. I think I played really well this game. My sleep dart accuracy was above my average. My heals and damage were pretty balanced. Still, I know I have a ton to improve, so please, if you have the time, let me know what I should work on most. A little background for those interested. I've been playing the game for a few years now. I've been lurking the sub for the past eight months, trying to absorb as much information as I can just by reading, seeing other people's thoughts, watching streamers, etc. I watch a lot of CarQ, I've seen Awkward's unranked to GM on Ana, and I've watched some old Ana VOD re reviews of Adders on his YouTube channel. Okay, so it's funny because I saw this before I read the end, and I was thinking I hadn't done an Ana review in a while, so I was like, oh, this is like a, a pretty good option. And that was before I read the end, which where OP said they actually watch my videos, which is great. Cool, I'm glad, I'm glad they're helpful to you. Um, anyway, when we look at this game, I'm not going to be watching a ton of it, probably like the first, I think, like five, six minutes, first, first two push points on, on, on offense. Um, but to note, let's, I just want to look at what the game situation is, okay? So at the very end of the game, uh, OP's team is on offense, and you can see that they push the car up to here. They're not going to win this fight, but if they win this fight, that's one fight, they would cap here, and then they just win one more fight, and that's basically it, right? Because generally speaking, the defense is not, if you win that fight over there, then they probably don't get a serious contest here. It's like maybe like two and a half fights, okay? I am going to give you f easy advice, free advice here that will get you five ranks easily, if not 10 ranks of advice over the course of this review, because there's a lot of really easy things that you can do right. And we're going to start for the first one. Now, a reminder, you only need to win two fights here to win the game, right? If you win two fights, you win the game. I'm going to give you one of the fights for free right now. So we're going to watch the very start of the game. Here's the very start of the game. Okay, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch the Zarya. Uh, that is intentional. Let me set the sound back down. All right, here's Zarya coming on. People coming on spawn. Watch the Zarya still. What's happening? Zarya's just getting some energy. Great. Zarya's backing up a little bit. Getting pressured. Oh, gets javelined into the room. Gets zap shot by the Zen on the side and gets killed. The second that happens, you've lost first point. I think we'd all agree with that, right? You lose your tank right away. Most hybrid maps, uh, which are, you know, uh, a capture point at the start and then payload, most hybrid maps, if you lose the first fight, you lose the point. I would say like 80% plus of the time you lose the point. Well, your first question would be, where are you? Right? Well, let's let's find out. So, reminder, we were watching from the very start of the game, okay? 12, 11, 0. Here's the start of the game. This is where you are in the spot. This is where your team is. Is there a reason why you are a 20 second walk away from your team? No, <laughs> there is no reason. <laughs> if you say, hey, like, you know, it's, it's hard to come back or whatever, like just don't queue until you're ready to play. This is like so, like to me, like it's so frustrating to me both when it happens to me in the game, but also as a coach to see this happen. Because people are like, oh, I wanna win, I wanna win, what can I do better? And like, I swear, like one out of every 15, 20 games I review, somebody's literally AFK at the start of the round or sometimes even at halftime, like after the round ends. And I'm like, I don't understand. If you wanna win so badly, just play the game, right? If you're not here and your team dies without you, then you've lost the fight. Why would you go into a game with a one fight handicap? Because that's literally what's going on right now, right? Watch how long it takes you to get to the front. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and now your Zara's dead. And that's it, right? That's it. I, you literally have no ability to change this fight. Because there were 18 seconds that your team was fighting. Where it's not like your Zarya instantly died. It's not like she got instantly killed by a Hanzo Widow headshot simultaneously. There's no way you could have saved it. There are so many things you could have done here to save and slash flip the situation around. But you can't do any of them if you're not there. It is the most basic of things in Overwatch. Small children can do this, right? They can be in the fight. <laughs> They're not going to be able to like do anything mechanically correctly, but they can at least show up. 
All right? That's all you have to do. Just all you have to do is to show up to give yourself any chance, right? Because you have defender's advantage here. Your chance of winning any given fight is probably like 55%, maybe 60%. You not being here give your team basically 0% chance of win. And like, you're probably going to say something like, oh, well, it doesn't happen every game. But it happened this time, which guarantee, I guarantee it happens some of the time. And at the end of the day, like, the reason why you don't win games and climb is because you make a series of many different mistakes. It's not always the same mistake. There are many different mistakes. You just need to, and you don't need to play perfectly. You just need to reduce enough mistakes that you start climbing out of the rank that you're in. I feel like at a bare minimum, if somebody is trying to competitively play, they should be able to play the game. Like, imagine if you play any other sport ever, and at the start of the game, when you were supposed to be playing, you were literally not playing the game. Like, imagine a five-on-five -five basketball game where you are scheduled to start, and you are, like, and, like, you know when the game time is, and when tip-off occurs, you run to the bathroom. Like, how can you expect your team to win in that situation just being down a player? It's, it's literally that simple. Okay. So, just want to get that off my, out of my way. Next thing is, I want to cover, you know, help me improve so I stop getting roasted in chat. You're never going to stop getting roasted in chat. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I don't care if you are the number one Ana in the world. I guarantee you there will still be times where your teammates will blame you for whatever is going on. And sometimes they'll even be right. Even if you're the number one Ana, like everybody makes mistakes, right? Even the best players in the world make mistakes and they get flamed too. And I can tell you this from personal experience too. Sometimes when I have to play like on you know, off rolls or on alt accounts or whatever. And like, you know, I'm in, I don't know, like, like platinum or something like that. And I'm winning 85, 90% plus of my games and people will still flame me. And like, I don't say anything because why would I bother saying anything? I'm way better than that. Like I, it, not only that people will flame me and I'll still end up winning the game, right? And of course they won't apologize later or anything like that. And I don't care and I don't, I don't bother, right? Because I just want to focus on my own play. That's the only thing I control is my own play. Just do that. Right? Don't worry about if anybody else is flaming you or not. Because sometimes they can flame you and they're, it is like accurate that you made mistakes. It doesn't mean you deserve to get flamed, but I'm just noting that like sometimes they'll flame you and you are making mistakes. Sometimes they'll flame you and you're not making mistakes. But regardless, it doesn't matter. Just you will never get to any level, even at the GM, even in Challenger, where you will not get flamed at some point in time for playing poorly. So if your whole goal of climbing is purely to get to a level where you won't get flamed, that is never going to happen. <laughs> the, the only way to guarantee that is to disable voice and text chat. That's the only way I can guarantee that you will not get flamed. And even then some people might try to friend you and then flame you there. But, okay, let's cover actual kind of gameplay, gameplay stuff, not just being AFK. All right, so the threshold for mechanics in console as a general rule, is significantly lower than it is for PC. Um, that is my general observation, having done, I don't know, 600-something reviews at this point in time. This is a really good example of this. So you're in Gold 4 right now. Um, gold 4 is roughly average of all players, historically. I don't know what it is after Season 9, because I don't have published any stats, but historically, mid-ish gold is about the 50 percentile mark for all players in, 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 uh, in Overwatch, right? So if we imagine a PC, you know, gold four would mean you are the, the definition of the average player. But I want to show you just mechanically all the things that go wrong here. So your mortar comes out, great, you got the heal here. So let's watch. So from here, that shot is not even close, right? This is the shot, this is where the Moira is, right? So like, this is a Moira, this is a Moira, this is a Moira, this is a Moira. So you are four, Three, three, three more years away from hitting being on target. So as a general rule, when you're trying to hit a target, if you're going to miss, you want to miss close, okay? If you miss here, okay, that's fine. That's, that is a totally reasonable miss. If you miss here, that's okay too, right? You're kind of the edge of the arm here, that's fine. This miss, this is not so good. This is already pretty far away from the target. This miss is real bad. Right? This is like a huge issue in terms of like trigger discipline because you're not even remotely close to the target at this point. When you should, this is assuming they don't use like a movement ability, right? They're just walking around, right? Once you get to this threshold of level, like you are just way off. At this point in time, you're basically not even aiming at all. And that is the issue here. 
There is no way that when you pushed this button right here, that you thought this was going to hit the Moira. Right? Like, you can clearly tell that your crosshair is multiple hitbox models away from the Moira. If you want to get better, you need to be better at aiming if you play aim intensive heroes. Like, if you play Mercy, not a problem. Ana is a very intense, aim intensive hero, right? You need to be able to aim. I would say less so compared to others. I think mean, Baptiste and Kiriko are harder, but like, Ana's like still a fairly aim intensive hero. You can't be missing. I would note also that Ana has a huge amount of like actual like uh, leeway with her hitbox. Like in the scope mode, you actually have a lot of leeway there to, to, to hit the dart as well. But just in general, like you are really far off on this shot. I would not be harping on this though if it was just one shot that was like this, right? Everybody whiffs, you watch one of my games, you will eventually see, I don't know if you'll see a whiff that bad, but like, yeah, sometimes you'll whiff it. But like, I'll know it like right away. I'm like, okay, and I'll readjust immediately. So, this sleep dart also not on track. I also note that you have time to fire another shot here, right? I think it's easier to tell live. See, like, you, there's definitely enough time that you could have fired another dart there to try to heal the Moira. But the sleep dart, also not on target. But it's like, okay, it's like close-ish that I'm like, this is fine. Going back to the gold four uh, note, right? Reason why I talked about this is if I were to guess what the aim level of this was, and I didn't know it was console, and I'd do a PC equivalent, I would say that this is probably mid to low bronze. And that's what I mean by what the, the mechanical difference is between like PC and console, especially at the lower ranks. It is like very wide, like how far apart they are in terms of their aiming ability. And the reason why this is important to note is because if PC players can do it, I believe console players can do too, and I've seen plenty of, like, reviewed plenty of console players who have really good aim. I think that for PC, this is this is what I would kind of guess is going kind of going on. For PC, it's probably like a normal distribution. This is a terrible normal distribution, right? It's probably, right, a normal. Ugh, this is so hard to draw. There, good enough. It's probably like a normal-ish distribution of like aim-wise, okay? But I feel like on console. It, it almost feels like it's something like this, where like these players just don't have their sensitivity calibrated or like super casual or whatever, and all have like generally really bad aim. <laughs> and then at a certain point, like once you hit like diamond plus, it feels like then the aim starts looking like comparable to PC. I don't know what it is. I'm just noting here that like the aim is like is such a problem that like I feel like you could make massive rank improvements just from being just slightly better at your aim. Anyway, so you grenaded the, the Moira here, okay? That had that dart, non-target. Okay, let's we'll live with it. We'll live with that, okay? But at this point, like scope and heal your poor Moira. Okay, we still haven't healed the Moira. Still haven't healed the Moira. We're not healing Cassidy either. We're just kind of scoping right now. We, that dart, there's literally not even a hero on your screen, right? Because this pole is blocking it. There is no way this dart would ever hit anybody. Now your Cassidy is dead, right? And finally we heal him more. So backing up here. So what do we, what do we really do? What do we do here? So we got one heal dart and then we get a miss. A sleep dart that misses, a grenade that's not going to do anything, because it doesn't even hit your Moira, and Orisa's full health, so it's not going to do anything. Then another miss, then another miss, then another miss, and then finally we get a heal. What should you actually be doing right now is you should just bleed the ending darts, okay? So let's let's count them out. Let's count what, what theoretically could have happened if we were being more optimal with actually shooting on time. So that's one. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I could have fired ten darts in that period of time that you fired four, five, something like that, right? And again, you can throw grenades and sleep darts in between the darts to make sure that you have almost no reduction in, in sleep dart time. So you're literally like, there are long periods of time where you're literally not doing anything, right? Because you could have gotten another dart right here before you go for the sleep. Okay, then, right, this dart misses, this dart misses again, then you're not darting right now. Like, just, just keep darting, just dart your Cassidy, right? Save your Cassidy right now. Save your Cassidy. Not saving Cassidy. And then your Moira dies. 
this is a, a very common problem with, with metal, low metal rank players in particular, right? Obviously, you're not actually, you're like middle of metal rank, but like a PC equivalent, right? Is that for low metal rank players to just not be active enough, just do things, right? Accuracy is one problem, but also APM, actions per minute, is another problem, which is constantly be doing things. You're just not acting fast enough to do things that will potentially impact the fight, like healing your Cassidy and getting a save there, for example. Not that I think you can win this fight anyway, because again, you lost your Zarya right away. But darts here are good, right? Good, right? So obviously you can hit targets there, so we're good here. I think you've a little quicker to save the Ash there, but fine, it is what it is. Try to dodge the Eresa. Okay, we've escaped, fine. I, I, there's some issues here with the escape, but like it's not worth covering them. So let's think about this. Is there a way that we could potentially recontest this point? Unlikely. As I mentioned, hopefully you've played enough Overwatch that you know that generally speaking, you do not successfully recap, retake points on hybrid mode after you have lost them. That is the general rule. That doesn't mean always you need to be ready for it, but generally speaking, you do not expect a retake here. Now, if your team is going in, go ahead and follow me. But if your team's not going in, you should chill a little bit. So I might stay with my Zarya, but I'm not gonna like bolt in there head first or anything like that. You also know two other pieces of information. Number one, you know that your Cassidy died relatively recently. And number two, you know your Ash is currently dead. So it is very unlikely we're gonna be able to make a reasonable recontest here. Where are you going? Like, let's just think for a second. Where are you going? What are you trying to accomplish right now? Do you think that your tank, right, who is being healed by you, who has decided, I don't wanna push this, do you think that you have a higher chance of contesting the point than your tank does? No, right? Like, I, I, again, I feel like you must have played enough Overwatch at this point in time. And you watched so much, so many videos, right? You watched a ton of Karku, you, you watched Awkward, you watched my reviews. You have to know right now that it cannot be your job in this situation to frontline, run past your Zarya, and try to push the point. What are you doing right now? Right? Like, th this... This is so basic. Like you're just throwing fights by making bizarre decisions. You can't say, hey, I feel like, you know, I'm playing really well, you know, and and, and look at this. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously you can't say that. I'm not saying you don't, you don't have the right to say that, but like, I'm just trying to kind of fight through the, the, like the, the, misunderstanding that you have around the, the quality of your play. If you've ever sit, end up in a situation where you are at the forefront of your team, all alone, like literally there's only two people who are visible on the screen, right? You and your Zarya, and you run ahead of your Zarya, and you are point blank with the Orisa and the Bastion, you cannot possibly think, I have made the right play here. Because you haven't. The correct play here is to just wait back play around your Zarya's lead. That's what tanks are for, right? Tanks decide when to push, when to retreat. If your tank is retreating, retreat with them. You definitely do not want to be pushing in right now. This is crazy. This is suicidal. Now, what's even more hilarious is, I don't actually think you die here, if my memory serves. I think you actually live here, but we'll see. But regardless, if you're in this situation somehow, your number one reaction to involve Bashing Goes Assault form should be to sleep it. Bastion has a huge hitbox. If you sleep him, it removes like half of his uh, assault form time. It's extremely powerful against him. You should sleep right away. You should not grenade. You'll notice the grenade does not do anything to stop him from killing you. Right? They're both barely injured by your grenade. You're still going to die right now. Why are you going to die? Because Bastion does 360 damage per second. That's not even including the Orisa. You die instantly here. And yet, they don't kill you. Somehow... They don't kill you in this situation. I just want to point out how ridiculous this is. On PC, in bronze, you are 100% dead here if you do not sleep. There is no way, even, unless this is bronze 5, there is no way on PC somebody would let you live here. Like, the Bastion is literally running away from you right now because you threw a grenade at him. <laughs> like, all these shots are just shooting at the wall. And... It, Truly, truly, this is, uh, I, I want to, I, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want to point out to you 
this is just how bad the enemy is. The enemy is so bad that you just walked in front of this bastion in assault form. Right now, dead center in his screen, while he is in assault form, with five seconds left, and you have no cover, you have no defensive abilities, you don't even have a grenade to heal yourself. Like, you are 100% dead here. You are so dead that if you blindfolded me here, I am pretty sure I could still kill you, right? If you centered it on, on you and you blindfolded me, I'm like 95% sure I would still kill you here. <laughs> like that is how dead you are that someone could literally be blind at this point, like flashbang their screen and you will still die. And this is the quality of players that you are playing against. It should be very easy for you to win games because the enemy is really, really bad at punishing mistakes. Like, extraordinarily bad at punishing mistakes. All right, so we're gonna back up here. So, one thing that you do that you're a problem with is, if you're healing a target, don't just run towards them. Healing them, shooting a target, and moving should be independent. You should heal them, sure, good. But should I be moving forwards, or backwards, or left, or right? Well, that depends on a lot of different factors. I probably don't want to be playing right here because this is in the open and it's away from cover. I probably need to play right here. So I want to stay here and heal the Zarya. If, if the Zarya needs more help, I don't want to run forwards. I probably just want to stay here because this is safe. This is unsafe, right? So try to generally get away from the Zarya. So I mean, some, some trouble, accuracy trouble. I don't really know why you're going to the left, I, but that's okay. I mean, I, maybe you could predict that this is going to happen. That's fine. All right, so Zarya's got up, killed a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I think it's good. Your your accuracy against enemies is quite good, actually. It, it seems to be specifically be a problem with shooting teammates that's an issue. I don't know if that has to do with um, whatever the uh, the sensitivity reduction is. Aim assist, that's what I'm thinking of. Aim assist is a console. I don't know if that's related or not, but it seems to be specifically a problem with healing teammates. Okay. So your Zarya just killed a whole bunch of people, great. All right, you're putting some damage down. Okay, it's fine. I really should heal the casting right now. You should heal either of the DPS. But like, this is a good example, okay? You have two teammates here who are critically wounded. You need to heal at least one of them. What is this shot at? Who is this shot for? I don't even know. Is it is it for your Zarya, who is full health? Or is it for your Cassidy, who is on the other side of the screen? Or is it for the Ash, who is also on the other side of the screen? I truly do not know who the shot is aimed at. But this is a good example of your issue is not simply aim, it's trigger discipline. You're just hitting the button whether or not there is someone near your crosshair or not. This is not an aim issue. There's no one near your crosshair. I mean, this shot also not on target. Your, your Ash is even dodging. She's running a straight lane right now, throwing tire right. So we've now missed three shots in a row while we have two critical health teammates. I will tell you, it will be very hard to win games if you cannot land at least one of those shots in a pressure situation, and you're not even under a lot of pressure, right? More pressure is gonna make it hard. Imagine trying to heal somebody while Tracer's actively like, like three meters from you trying to kill you, but you know the only way you win is if you pocket somebody else so they can carry the fight. That's like the threshold for great autoplay as we go up. Good autoplay is, pocketing somebody who's under immense amount of DPS pressure, but landing every shot, right? We are multiple tiers below that. You can't even heal people when you're not even under pressure and they're not even actively dodging. It's like a big, big, big problem, right? Because again, the primary way you provide value is by healing, damage, and using your abilities. But like, if you can't hit targets, both healing and damage are just gonna be irrelevant, right? If you're missing shots, it's as though you're AFK. Think of it that way, right? You don't get participation points for winning, right? Or rather, participation points, participation points do not count towards winning, right? Simply being in a fight but not doing anything does not help you win. You need to actually land shots. All right, Reese is up here. But let's think about this for a second. Why? Why are we running forwards right now? Right? Why are we running forwards right now? First of all, we haven't seen Teresa use any abilities. So presumably she has spin, she has fortify, she has ultimate, she has full health. Why are we running forwards right now? Because either spin or fortify or ultimate, all of those things would, would counter dark right now. So I'm not looking at this as, oh, let's sleep Teresa and get a pick. I'm thinking, 
I don't know why the Orisa's here. I gotta play safe. I gotta pocket my Cassidy through this, get some damage on the Orisa if I can, but generally just try to play safe. You just run up to this Orisa. Now, you're very lucky here that the Orisa does not appear to know how to hit any buttons because she just runs up here, right? Here's Cassidy in her face, and she doesn't hit any of the buttons that she has available to her. Now she finally pops Fortify. <laughs> and then, so, like, this is just, this is bad decision making, right? Just stay back here and just play safe. Until, unless you understand, look, there's definitely a huge play to be made here. Don't do this. Don't run up to enemies, especially enemy tanks, especially full health enemy tanks, and expect that this is going to go well for you. Right? Because if the Orisa just gets up here and then pops ultimate and gets any amount of healing from this BAP, you both die. Right? Like, how do you survive here if the Orisa just pops ultimate? Like, you're super lucky that the, that the Orisa just throws all her abilities away, the BAP doesn't do anything to help, and the BAP and the Orisa dies. You should not look at this as, as, oh man, I made a play, I killed the Orisa. You did not deserve that play, right? You could have just sat way back here, safely, at this corner, and everything would have played out the same, except that if the Orisa was better, you would not have gotten pulled into ultimate, you would not be in trouble if, you, if, she, if she spun or uh, resisted your sleep dart with Fortify, right? You just, these are just like, really bad, like, I don't even know where you're trying to go here with the, to the right. Are you like trying to take high ground right now? <laughs> like, there's no point in this. I think you recognize that you're too excited. You're trying to maybe get something safer, but this is insane. If I'm the Orisa, I just go up here and kill you. Like, I literally have just popped Fortify, walk up here and kill you. you. Neither one of you can stop me in time. Like, you are definitely gonna die here. When I have Javelin, Fortify, even with half health, you're dead. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna walk up to you and kill you. You have no ability to stop me. You have no sleep dart, you have no grenade, right? Nobody else can heal you. You have no mobility skills. You just die. At a minimum, I trade for you right here. You can't be doing this. So, your team decided to push up. You see the Bastion in the doorway. What did we talk about earlier on Bastion and Assault Form? If you use Assault Form, a really good option, I would say, as a general rule of thumb, is to sleep him immediately. It's very, very effective, very frustrating for the Bastion to deal with. But we decided not to sleep him. So, people are getting shot up over here. So, Reese's walked through the doorway. You can see that your Cassie's gonna die here. You can see the Bastion is pushing on your Zarya. So, again, Sleep Dart would be great here. I mean, again, you should, Sleep Dart would be great here. As a reminder, Bastion does 360 damage per second. He does so much damage that both Zarya bubbles mean nothing to him. Both Zarya bubbles would give Zarya 950 health, and the Bastion would still kill her in three seconds. Let's think about that for a second. Both of the Zarya bubbles and full health would still mean the Bastion's going to kill her in three seconds seconds the most valuable thing you could do here is to sleep the bastion the other option here would be maybe i can nano switch for high energy maybe i don't know you think that things are kind of going right here so i understand not nanoing but like sleeping here is definitely your best option also know how low the bastion is right sleeping nading either one of those things would result in the bastion dying and desire potentially living but now things have gone awry and we're going to back up here so Let's think for a second. What's my job right now? My tank has died. My Ash is over here, right? A bunch of my team is regrouping. What's my job? Well, you've watched a lot of Ana gameplay. Now, one of the things you should know about Ana gameplay is when there are lulls in the fight, you want to find a good spot to prepare for the next fight, which is often high ground, someplace medium to long range away so that you don't get picked off. So do you want to be here? No, right? There's no tank in front of you. You're what's called frontlining right now where there's nothing between you and the enemy team. You want to retreat, and you're going to go back and take high ground. Is your ass playing something? Yeah, but like, what can you do about it, right? Like, maybe you can play like over here if you want to maybe try to heal the Ash earlier if the Ash is trying to retreat. But there's nothing you can do here. This is crazy. What are you doing? Like, again, what is your plan right now? Rhetorical, obviously. What is your plan? You can say, you say, hey, look, I, every, you know, I see all my all the other teammates make make horrible mistakes and they still blame me for losing. What is your plan right now? Like, what? why are you fighting two enemies extremely far away from your team? It's not like they caught you. You ran at them. You literally chose to run at them. See? See, you started over here. What are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you trying to fight three heroes at once? Like, what is the plan here? 
<laughs> and of course you're gonna get away from it. The, the reason that you get away from the enemy so often is like literally you throw a grenade at them and they're like, oh god, it's a grenade. I can't possibly like fight somebody when I have when I'm anti-healed, despite the fact that I can just straight up win. <laughs> It's it's truly kind of crazy how often people just run away from you as soon as you chuck a grenade at them. It's like kind of bonkers. All right, Bastion gets picked because Bastion also has no way. Nobody in this game knows what they're doing. I'm gonna make that very clear. Like again, if this was a PC, everybody here would be bronze. <laughs> like very clearly, everybody here would be bronze. None of this gameplay looks remotely like what Overwatch actually looks like. At like not even like high high ranks, like in like PC. North America middle ranks. Like, this is, like, truly bonkers, like, what people are doing. Like, why would the Bastion be doing this? He doesn't have assault form anymore, and he's, like, low, and he's still trying to push this right now. But his assault form is, like, ending, like, basically in another second, right? And he's just getting killed here for no reason. He literally just suicided into your team. All right. So, you're going to have the May guy here, who has ice block, and she has wall. You're losing to people who don't push their buttons. <laughs> if you don't believe me, let's think about it for a second. How could this May have played worse than they did right now? Like, you tell me what, other than the fact that they hit a body shot icicle right there. This May and a bot are indistinguishable. <laughs> There's literally nothing this May did. She just walked forward and just gave her life up. So, again... That's what I'm saying. Like, five to ten ranks, easy. Like, if you just slow down, focus, what's my job? My job as Ana is to stay medium to long range away, to have line of sight on preferably my tank and some of the enemies, apply damage, apply healing, throw nades at the enemy, sleep people when I need to. Right? Nano when I need to. That's what I need to do as Ana. That will literally get you ten ranks right there. But, like, nothing that you're do doing right now resembles that. Right? Just, just look right here, okay? So, so Cassidy right here has just got Javelin. So we're just going for easy heal, right? What is this? Wh what? Look how far away this is. And then, and then, okay, fine, right? Maybe this is just a really bad flick. Hello? <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. Like, I, I feel like it must be like an aim assist issue on, on friendlies or something like that because you like grossly over aim. Like you cannot seem to hit targets which are friendlies, which is again a problem obviously on Ana since you need to be able to hit targets. But yeah, okay. So going over here, let's go back to what is my job as Ana? To stay medium long range away, ideally be able to see my tank, see the enemy, right? It applies some damage. Now, you can also use other schools of thought. You could go for maybe the awkward school of thought where it's like, look, I don't even care about killing my teammates. All I want to do is damage. I can find an offense and kill everybody. The problem is you can't kill everybody. So like that only works if you actually have the ability, have the skill to do so. But like, why am I over here? Like, why am I standing over here to begin with? Is it because you think, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like poke down whoever's over here? Again, do you think that your aim is better than theirs? Do you think your dueling skill is better than theirs? If not, I wouldn't take this fight. You're just exposing yourself tremendously to anything that's over here, like such as a Sombra, for no reason. Right? Now here's a Sombra, and now you're super low. It's good sleep, though. So we got a good sleep. The correct call here to do is to ignore the Sombra and walk away. The reason being is no one's going to be able to help you with the Sombra anyway, so just go and deal with something else, right? This is going to keep the Sombra out of the fight for like five seconds. Just go over here, help what's going on here, right? Nade, heal up your Zarya, right? Try to kill the kill the Orisa after everybody's been healed up, and then see what happens. But going after the Sombra here is 100% the wrong call. Because this happens. Right. Generally speaking, I would say that your gameplay does not demonstrate any sort of forethought. Like, the idea of being able to understand what are the consequences of my actions, what will happen next. Because I see this as... I have 96 health and I'm hacked, which means I'm about to lose even more health, A. B, I can hear that audio cue for Terra Surge, so I know my whole team's getting pulled in. And C, the Sombra is full health, which means I'm not going to be able to kill her easily here. If I am going to commit to the duel, I want to make sure I get healed by the grenade, so I'm going to throw the grenade between us so that we both get healed. 
But I'm definitely not going to run away from the Sombra, then throw the grenade, and then have her easily kill me from here. Right? This is the kind of basic stuff that would rocket you up the ranks if you just didn't keep making like egregious mistakes every single fight. Right? There's no reason for you to die here. All right, so going forwards. We're going up. I think I'm fine with this, right? I can hear the Sombra on the right, the uh, Dash on the right though, so I would preferably like to deal with him. Okay, great. I don't know that you need to sleep anymore. I also do not understand what's going on here. So you see the Orisa here. So I think you could stand up here and just poke down the Orisa, but instead you decide to do some like 360 no scope as you jump down here and decide to immediately fight the, fight the Zenyatta. I have no idea why you decided to fight the Zenyatta. Like, I don't know what information you had here that made you think I should go after the Zenyatta below me, who's at full health, instead of just staying high ground safely to then deal with the Orisa with the Zarya and then killing the Zenyatta after. I have literally no clue why you decided to tunnel vision on this Zenyatta. I don't know if you're like cued with the Sombra or something like that, that you did went for this play, but like, I, I don't know why you did this. It ends up being like a perfectly fine play, but I have no idea how, how I could give you advice to repeat this because I don't know how you knew this was going to happen, right? Like, you don't have any information right now that the Zenyatta is under pressure at this moment per se, right? Like maybe you hear the Sombra, Sombra shooting a little bit, but like at the moment that you drop, the Zenyatta still had like a significant amount of health and yet you like, like oh yeah, definitely Sombra, the Zenyatta, let's, let's kill the Zen. There's also a Sombra over here that's killing your Sombra. Like you're jumping in front of an Orisa. Like I, I have no clue how you thought to make this play. And I guess it sort of works, right? But then you're gonna die here to the Orisa, which is exactly what I'd expect. Versus if you just stayed high ground, like yeah, maybe you don't kill the Zed, but like you'll stay alive and continue poking down the, the, the Orisa, right? Then Zarya's gonna drop with the Sombra and then Zed's gonna die anyway. But instead you drop down, you kill the Zed, sure, but then you get you suicide, die for it. Which doesn't feel so great. Astute viewers, especially auto players, might notice there is one specific thing that I have not really been talking about, and I'm saving it for the end. All right, so we come over here to re rejoin people. You really should heal the Zarya, which you have not. So zero darts and you miss the grenade, which is critical. And the Zarya's dead. As mentioned, if your tank dies, usually it means the fight's over. So the fact that you died last fight and staggered yourself meant that now your Zarya has died, which means you had no ability to save her. Actually, you did have the ability to save her, you just didn't use any of your abilities. But if you'd been here from the beginning, it would have been easier to save her. So you missed the save here, you lost your tank, and now things are not gonna go well for you, right? So Morgan's dead, you probably could have landed the dart there to heal her, but it's what it is. I mean, eh, Bastion's there. All right, I, you were dying from hack, I would probably have dated myself right there. Unbelievably lucky that the, the Zarya comes in and saves you with the bubble at the last second. Oh boy. That's super lucky. All right, Trance has popped. We should probably reload, you're missing eight ammo. Like, nothing's happening right now. At this moment, reload, right? Reload, 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 reload. I could have reloaded like four times already. And now we only have five ammo. You're trying to keep an eye on your Zarya. Your Zarya's gonna die. So things are going really poorly right now, but th thankfully, nobody in this game can aim. <laughs> so despite the fact that you're sitting on the cart, you can sit over here. EMP has been popped. All right, I would want, I would just exploit this and go forward, right? Yeah, maybe shoot the Zen here, right? Shoot the Baptiste. Do you shoot, frankly, anybody? Like, you're just not even shooting anyone. Look, you're, you're not even hitting the trigger right now. You see, like, you're literally not pushing any buttons. Like, you threw a grenade there when you could have shot first and then threw a grenade, animation cancel it. Now you're shooting the Orisa, and now the card's gonna cap. And with that, you're all gonna end up dying on Sweden. Now, what is the thing that I have not mentioned and really talked about much this game so far? You have not popped Nano in six minutes. Hello? <laughs> Nano was one of the fastest farming ultimates in the game. It is one of the best ultimates in the game. When are you going to use your Nano? Like just use Nano to win fights or give you a chance at winning fights. You had so many opportunities over the course of the game. You had so many. Again, you got Nano all the way back here, okay? You have Nano at, what is this? Two minutes and 30 seconds. 
The next three and a half minutes go by before, and you still haven't popped Nano. I actually don't know when your next Nano is. Okay, so you managed to pop Nano after holding it for four and a half minutes. And you pop it on your Ash, who's like stuck out in the open here in front of a window. So as a general rule, when you get Nano, you're really looking to pop it as soon as you reasonably can and just take a fight win with it, okay? Don't use it like recklessly. Like if you don't need the Nano, don't pop it. If Nano's not gonna change the fight outcome, don't pop it. But in general, if there's any chance, pop Nano, right? Nano farms very, very quickly. You can often get Nano every other fight. In the next, in the period of time that you used one Nano, I could have gotten three Nanos. If all else being equal between us in terms of accuracy, game sense, ability usage, the fact that I used two more ultimates than you did almost assuredly guarantees that I'm going to win the game. I cannot emphasize how strong Nano is as an ability. And you had so many opportunities here. So let's just look at this fight where you could have used Nano. So we're coming out here. So Bob's out. Obviously, we're looking for a last second contest here. Our Zarya's are gonna force the contest right now. I just wanna get LOS on my Zarya. So my Zarya's going left side, why would I go right side? Because I can hear the Arisa here. If I stand here, the Arisa's gonna hunt me down. If I go left side, I can stay here safer, shoot the Arisa, the Arisa, sorry, shoot the Zarya, heal the Zarya. If Arisa pushes me, I can run this way and try to use the barrier as cover. But if I go to the right, I lose, I'm literally breaking LOS on the Zarya myself. You can see the Zarya is going to the left, right? She's not cutting. Like she has to touch the cart. She can't walk behind the barrier. She has to walk forwards. But you notice that you are walking to the right. There's no reason for this. You need to go to the left to stay on the Zarya here. Otherwise, you're not going to have LOS. But you break LOS of the Zarya, which puts you in enormous trouble. And then you come over here, and the Zarya is dead. So the correct play here is follow the Zarya to the left, go over here, right, engage, throw Nade to the back side of the point, Nade, and then Nano the Zarya, right? Or if you don't time Nano Zarya first, then throw Nade, try to kill the Zen. Right, try to kill Zen, try to kill the Baptiste. That is the correct play here, which gives you a chance at winning. And frankly, a very good chance at winning, because in fact, that you guys nearly won this fight anyway. In fact, I think you actually do manage to kill everybody. Yeah. See, like you guys actually win this fight. You're gonna kill, actually kill everyone here. You're gonna win this fight. If you pop Nano on your Zarya, you guarantee you win this fight. And that's it, right? If they don't cap that, then maybe they never push it to the next point and then you win the game. So if we look at, from the very start, you only need to win two fights to win this game. I can give you two fight wins right there. One, don't be AFK at the start of the fight, the start of the game. Number two, pop Nano, once, just once, <laughs> just once. And that already is enough to get you, get you, get you, get you this win. That is how little you need to do to turn this game from a close loss to a steamroll victory. <laughs> and that's before talking about any of the other things we've, we've, we've discussed. All right? I feel like I said this was short, but I still ended up being basically a full-length review. All right, we're gonna hold there, all right? So in summary, it's not one thing, right? It's all of the things, all of the things you're doing can be improved, right? The positioning, the aim, the ability usage, right? Choosing what fights to take, saving teammates, using nanos, right? Being smart about when you use sleep. We even discussed grenades really, but like grenades, all the things that you do can be improved. Just start, just, if it's too overwhelming, just pick like one of those things, right? Just be like, look, when I get nano, try to use it in the next fight. Unless it's very obvious that Nano's not going to change the outcome of the fight, try to use Nano next fight, right? That's one simple thing, okay? Another one would be, don't frontline. Do I not see a tank, my tank in front of me? If so, don't walk forwards. That's like another really easy one. And like literally, it's worth multiple ranks of, of climb right there. It's just that straightforward, simple thing to not put yourself in incredible danger for no reason. Okay, I'm going to hold there. Hopefully, this is helpful.